base. We begin Chof Dalad Amad Alav, the last line, the two dots. He belched and he yawned and he sneezed. So this was in the middle of Shemad Asri. The rock and he spat. And he handled his clothing. So Rashi says that if there was uh, lice, he had to remove the lice. But if his talus fell, he would not pick up his talus to wrap himself with his talus. And when he yawned, however, he covered his mouth, he covered his uh, chin, he covered his mouth, so not to have it exposed when he yawned. So Remy did all of these things in the middle of Shemun Esri. Apparently that's not considered disrespectful or a problem in the middle of Shemun Esri. May say, Frank the Gemara, how can you say that? I would learn in the Bryce Mashmiya Kola Betfil also. If a person davens out loud, is Mashmiya Kola, he says it in a loud voice. Areza Mikitane Amona, it's like he has little faith. He thinks he has to scream to the Rabbi Nishan, the Rabbi Nishan hears everything. So he's considered Mikitane Amona. That's point number one. And number two, there might be a coil of tefillah also. If he lifts his vase, uh, raises his voice in tefillah, if he raises his voice in tefillah, or he's in the Via Shekin. He's considered a Navi Shekin. So the difference, as Rashi points out, Mashmiya Koila and Magbiya, Magbiya is even louder. So this was the derech of the false prophets that they used to scream to the Rabbi Nishalem, that for the Rabbi Nishalem to hear, hear them. They used to cry it or a call Godel. That's like a Novi Shaker. That's the practice of the false prophets. I mean, one daven is respectfully to Hashem and is aware that Hashem hears everything. He doesn't have to call out to Hashem, and he doesn't should not follow the practices of the Raviyah Shekin. Megayik v'mepayik, if he's Megayik v'mepayik, if he belches or he yawns or raises Megal Seruf, that's considered arrogant, he's haughty. Hamesatesh b'tfilosa simen roloi, if he sneezes, it's a simen roloi, it's considered a bad sign. V'yesh oimrim nikr shu mechor, and some say it looks is like he is an evil person. A rock between also a kilo rock between a melech, and if he spits, it's like he spits in front of the king, he's standing in front of the king, and he spits. So how do we reconcile Rebbe's practices with this price? Sigmar so says, Bish, Loma, Megai, Kamapai, Kloi, Kasha, as far as belching, and as far as yawning, it's not a Kasha, Kamo, Insa, Kamo, Ritzayna. The... When the Brisa speaks disparagingly about it, it's if he does it willingly. So if he does it willingly, then that's considered to be Gase Ruach. Rebbe, it was by accident. It was uh, without without a, a willingful act. So that's why it was permitted. So we can resolve Megai Gimapayeg, Megai Gimapayeg in that way. Hello, quote, however, the more else, hello, misatish, a misatish, kasha. But sneezing, in most cases, sneezing is not voluntary. And so sneezing is always considered or usually considered a lo'ainsay. So how can we resolve Rebbe's practice of sneezing with the b'risa that says that it's in rolling? So, Mesatesh, Amesatesh, Kash, from the Gemara, Mesatesh, Amesatesh, Nami Loi Kash. No, it's not a Kash we can resolve it the following way. Kamil Mala, Kamil Mata. They're not talking about the same type of sneeze. But Remy sneezes, it, it was Mutter, it was sneezing, Loinsai, then he, he sneezed. What we're talking, Mesatesh, in the Bryce is a euphemism, it doesn't really mean sneezing. It means that he was the Mephiach. And so is that considered, if he's Mizatesh, it's a Simen Ra. It's a Simen Ra that he does something embarrassing or something disgraceful and during the Tvila and something that is considered to be a, something that's a, an embarrassment. So that's a Simen Ra. But Rabbi was sneezing. So that's something that is lined. So and that's not considered a simen ra. And as we'll see further, it's quite the opposite. The Amar of Zera Hamilsa Ivloili be Rav Hamnuna v'Tekiluli Kukula Talmud. So he said the following manner. 
was evloyly the, the, the girsa on the side is evloyly. I, I inquired of it. I inquired of it, and from uh, Be Rav Amnuna, and a, it's was shockle to me. It's uh, something precious to me, like all the learning. He said as follows: Hamisatish b'tfilos a simen yafaloi. If a person sneezes in tefillah, it's a simen yafaloi. So as he spoke out to Mephorshim that he used to sneeze a lot. Perhaps he had allergies or something of that nature, but he used to sneeze a lot. And then he heard this memra that is considered a simen yafaloi. It's considered a good sign for him. So it was very precious to him. So why is it considered a simen yafa? Because kashim shoyisim loy nachas ruach mil mata. He, by sneezing, a person feels better afterwards. He relieves himself from whatever sinus pressure. Some Mephorshim say that it's chazak his body. It's a simen, uh, it's a simen yafala. It's, they do nachas ruach for him. He feels an oidl maze. He feels better. It shows that milmal and neshamayim, they're pleased with him. So they give him something which is nachas ruach. And as some of the Mephorshim speak out, by misatish milmata, it's the opposite. Since they are giving him something which is an embarrassment, it shows that in Shemaim is not so marutz, they're not so happy with him in Shemaim, therefore they cause an embarrassment for him in Oedem Haza. But by sneezing, they cause him to give him a, something of comfort, so it shows that he is marutz, that they're happy with him in Oedem Haza and Shemaim. However, practicing moral raga kasha, how do we resolve the difference between spitting that Rebbe did spit during the tefillah and the brisa says that it's something, it's like a spitting in front of the king? More answers, raga raga nami like kasha efshen ke reviura. Because one could spit in the manner of reviura, dom reviura hayo imed bit tefillah. If he was davening in his dama like Roy, can he have to spit? So he doesn't spit on the ground. That's where the Bryce says it's for so it's considered like spitting for the king. He 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 covers it up with his his talus. The talus no, and if he has a very nice talus and it's now it's something that it's now going to ruin and make it dirty, ruin it. Mavlia he's Mavlia and he covers it up in his uh, scarf or his turban. Ravina had the coin after the Ravashi, he was performed behind Ravashi in his Damale Roying, so he had to spit Paskala where he spit in back of him. On Malay said to him, Let's over there, Marl, other of Yudam of Liba Parkasusa. Don't you know this member of Yuda that you should cover it with your garment, with your with their scarf? On Malay, oh no, Anina Datoy, he says, I'm very finicky, I'm an Istanis, and for me to put it into my clothing, to cover in my clothing that it troubles me. That's something that bothers me because he's an isness, so that's why he did it in that manner. He did it in back of him, not in front of him. He did it in back of him. Continue with what the Brysa mentioned, what we had before, the different th- um, uh, mannerisms in Philip which are considered to be uh, something which are frowned upon. Hamashmiya called it to also raise a katana amana. It says of a person dominant out loud, he's considered a lack of a person with a lack of faith. It's as if he thinks that the Rabbi can't hear him unless he speaks out loud. That's only if he has an alternative. He could daven quietly and have proper kavona, and yet he speaks out loud, he davens out loud. There, where it's considered, that's derogatory. But if he can't have the proper kavona saying it quietly, muter, then it is muter. That's not because the reason he's doing it is to be able to be machav and more, to have better kavan. He's not doing it so as, as if the rabbi Shalom can't hear. It's, he's doing it to have more kavan. So it's the purpose of chila, then it's mutter. However, the more qualified said, that's only if he's davening by himself. If he's in the tzibur and there's other people there, also the mitra tzibur, he should not do it because it will interfere and disturb other people, it'll cause tzibur, and therefore he should not do it, even if it would help a first kavana. But if he's in the tzibur, he should not say it out loud. Rabbi Yava, how come you stand in the Rabbi Yehuda? He tried to avoid Rabbi Yehuda. Why? Davka boy the mesek lara the Israel. He wanted to go up to Israel, and Rabbi Yehuda was against that. Dom or Rabbi Yehuda kol oylem ibavol Eretz Israel. Someone is when Gavla goes bavol. Someone who leaves bavol to Eretz Israel. Over by essay, he's over with an essay. He's over in an essay. That because the Pasuk says, Shanemra Bavala Yavo, Veshama Yu, Adjoin Pakti Oisam Numashem. 
that they will stay in Bovel until I I redeem them. So therefore, therefore the he said once leaving Bovel to go there to Israel, he frowned upon that. Now, even though technically now we're really in, in the Gullus of Remy, not in the Gullus of Bavel, but nevertheless, the Pasuk says that the Kalim of the base of Migdish were brought to Bavel, and until they're brought up, one should not leave Bavel to Eretz Yisro. So, Omar, Ezelesh, Miminam Milsa, Mibes Vada, let me hear something from the base of Medrash, Vahadra Apik, and then I'll go. So he tried to avoid him, but in the meantime, he said, let me hear something from the base manager. Also, he heard this man, that it says a person is davening and he sneezed. So we're talking in this case. We're talking in this case where it means that he was mefiach. It's nisatesh milmato. He waits until the odor passes. And then he can resume his tefillah. Ikadam, as some say the following, and he felt the urge to be Mephiach, then he goes in back of him, Dalit Amas, for Amas, away from the spot that he was davening, and he's Mephiach, and he waits until the order passes, and then he goes back to his davening. And he says the following, he says the following to and as Tesis points out, he says this in the middle of his Shemana you create us with cavities, which are hollow, and you know our, our, how our Busha uh, in our lifetimes, right? And, a uh, human being is full, it lives his life full of things, embarrassing things, and full of bushim. And after he dies, he is now decomposed, and he's rima v'teleya, worms. And then, after that, and then he resumes his fila from the place that he stopped, or he interrupted before, and then he resumes the rest of his fila. Omar he said, if I only come for this to hear this alone, it would be sufficient. Ton Rabban, a person who was sleeping in his house, he's not clothed, so he had a talus or a blanket covering himself. And he can't remove his head up from under the covers because it's very cold. So he wants to remain covered with a blanket. He makes a separation, he ties the talus tight. Al Savara on his neck, the Kaira Krishna. His eyes should not be, uh, the erva, his mouth should not be exposed to his eyes. So he has to make a separation, he has to make a separation from his upper body, his lower body. If he can remove his head from under the blanket, that's preferred. If he can't, then he just tights it, ties it tight uh, around his neck so that there's a separation from the upper body and lower body, and he is not exposed to his erva. And some say that he has to tie it, to tie it tight under his chest, that there should be a separation between his lave, his heart, and his hair. The Tanakama, who does not say lave, he says only his head. I, Hare Liba Roya, say erva. There's no separation between his heart and the erva, so, so to speak, his heart is looking at the erva. Our answer is because some Liba Roya, say erva, Mutter. That Tanakama holds no, it's only a problem with his eyes viewing the erva. But Levi Roy Serva, the Tanakama holds his mood. Omar of Una Amra Yakalam Alpha is if he's walking on streets which are dirty. And so there is things that so you things that are not fit to recite Krishna over there. Maniak Yar Al Piv Kaya Krishna, he covers his mouth with his hand and he can recite recite the Krishna. So that's what Ravuna said. He says, like a shua im if I heard it directly from Yahya's mouth, still let's say similarly, I would not have accepted this. I would not accept it that he can walk through streets which are dirty and have soya and recite Krishna even in this manner where he's covering his mouth. That's one version of the Maisa. Another version is if he's walking on the streets which are not clean, and that he says, Krishna, 
So it says the name of a Rishu ben Levi, according to this version, not Rabbi Yechonon. Um, Malay Rav Chista, Lakimi, Mamali of Shub ben Levi, who may, Rav Chista said, if I heard it directly from Shub ben Levi, let's say, seen it, I would not have accepted it. Frank the Gemara Umi Amar Rav Huna Hachi. Did Rav Huna say that it is permitted in this manner to cover his mouth and walk through the streets that are dirty? Is it permitted in this matter of Amar Rav Huna? Talmud Chacham also lo lamed b'malkam ati noifes. A Talmud Chacham is not permitted to walk in a to stand rather to stand in a malkam ati noifes where it's not clean. Because the Talmud Chacham is always thinking in Tyre. His mind is always in Tyre. He's always thinking in Tyre. If he walks and stands, rather, if he stands in these dirty streets, he'll be thinking in Tyre, where, in a place which is not clean. So you see over here that Rav Huna himself says it's not permitted. It's not permitted for Debrit Tyre. Presumably, Krishna, it's the same Allah. How can he say by Krishna, it's from for the Gemara, like Kash, it's not a Kash. Kanda, Amen, Kanda, Mahalach. There's a difference between standing and walking. By standing, that's where Ravuna said he should not stand in such a place. Then that's also, even if he covers his mouth. But when Ravuna says it's mutter, it's when he walked through. He didn't stay in the place. The issue of being in a place which is not clean is, your camp should be college, as the Rishonim speak out. And therefore, therefore, in a place where he's standing, it's not permitted. If he's just walking through, that's not considered his machna, and that's not considered his place. And therefore, as long as he covers his mouth, Rav Huna says it's permitted. Right, did Rav Yechonon say that it's permitted to walk through a place that's not clean? In every place a person can think in Dibri Terah, but he can't be thinking in a, a Dibri Terah, a basic Kisei. So Rav Yechonon himself says he cannot be Mahar, but Dibri Terah, a basic Kisei. The Chitema, maybe, perhaps, you'll answer in a similar way. Maybe you'll answer it in a similar, similar way that here where he says it's also, it's only if he's standing. I, how could you say that? He was going behind Rav Yechen and reciting Krishna. When they got to streets which were not clean, now they were walking here. And nevertheless, when they got to streets which were not clean, he stopped. So he asked Rav Yechanan, he stopped, where should he go back to? Now that he stopped, where should he resume the Krishna? Amalei Rav Yechanan answered, in Shalit, Kedem Ligmar, as Pula Chazal Roy. She said, if you're stop, if you pause, if your interval was as long as it takes to recite the entire Krishna, you cannot just resume from where you left off. You have to start from the beginning. So apparently over here, even though they were walking through the streets, but Rav Yechanan held, you could not say Krishna. Isn't that a contradiction steer to Rav Yechanan said earlier? He more answers, no. This is what he meant, sent to him. According to me, since we're only walking through, I hold, you don't have to stop. You cover your mouth, you don't have to stop. But according to you, that you hold, that you do have to stop, so you stop. According to you, im shoyz, kere lukim ras kula chayz l'rash. If you stopped, the interval was as long as it takes to recite tonight, Krishna, you have to go back to the beginning. But in Hanami, Rabbi Yechon, the Shita Sals, you don't have to stop. Tanya Kavasi de Rav Huna, Tanya Kavasi de Rav Chitza, we have a Brisa supporting both Rav Huna, that it is Mutter, and a Brisa supporting Rav Chitza, that it's Ost. Tanya Kavasi de Rav Huna, Mahalav, and Vuaz Hamatunofa, is if he's walking the streets which are not clean, many Yechar Alapi, Vikari Yikari Krishna. You cover your mouth, you recite Krishna. She should not recite the Krishna. It's a riot of Christa. If he was reciting it, he has to stop. If he was, he shouldn't start. If he did, he must stop. If he didn't, what are the consequences if he didn't stop? That they'll have mishpatim that they will not be able to, will not have life with them. Meaning they're doing the mitzvah, they're trying to thinking they're doing the mitzvah, but they will not have life with this because because they're doing it in an improper way. They're reciting Krishna in mevusman to nafas. Ravasi Amar from a different source. So they are. Uh, 
bring the Averis on them, the Hevleyers with ropes which are weak, the Hevleyers. So the way Rashi speaks out, the Hevleyers are ropes which are not strong and can be broken. Here too, they, even with speaking, even without doing a Maisa, they just spoke. Something which is compared to an action is, is weaker, is lesser. He's still punished for bringing upon himself, even though he's doing the mitzvah, but with, and he's doing even Dibur, he's doing speaking in Krishna, a place which is not clean, he brings upon himself this Avera, this punishment. is disgracing the word of Hashem. The impossible maschar, if he did stop, what is his reward? With this matter, as Rashi speaks out, with this being careful with your dibor, you will have a richas yomim.